So after you've got a degree of the centre removed out of the bowl, it's really important that you get this outer edge sorted before you make this, this core, this central part, too thin. The big mistake you can make is you concentrate on this middle area, then you come back up to this outer edge, and because there's a degree of flex in the bowl itself then, you get this horrible chatter. So at this stage, while I've got about a third to go, I come out to the outer edge and I get this outer edge sorted now. So the most difficult cut of the bowl is when you start this cut. The first part of the cut, you're unsupported. The bevel is not resting on the wood and it's very likely to catch. So make sure you have a really firm grip and I work excessively under the centre. So I'm working almost right underneath where that, that mandrel's running. And try and be confident, keep the RPM up, take a very fine cut, and as soon as you create a little lip, you've then got something for the bevel to rest on, and then you're relatively safe. So we can make that, that rim as thin as we want to, before we make the rest of the bowl too thin itself. So I'm just changing the angle of the cut. Just like so. So now we've got that nice thin rim sorted. We've still got plenty of material here to support it. So at that stage, we can then concentrate on removing the bulk. You'll see that even this blank itself was quite dry but it's starting to centrifuge the moisture from the very core of the piece of wood and fling it out of this end, this end grain. Like moisture itself, we don't want this blank to be too wet, not like spindle turning. It actually helps if you rough it out and let it sit for a week or so to let the free moisture come out of it. If it's too wet, you'll find it will be difficult to cut, but also it'll be very heavy and hard to spin. So we'll concentrate, chasing this lip down, constantly now doing a bit of turning, feeling with your fingers, feeling the thickness. Like really, you don't want to go any thinner than about, about half an inch, I'd say, at this early stage. You can start making thinner bowls when you're a bit more confident, but it's very easy to, to, to make a hole in the bottom of your bowl. So aim for about something like half an inch and try and keep the thickness even. If you have it thin at the top and then a big thick base to it, it's likely to crack as it dries. So just gauge with your with your fingers. Like I like to think that you, you're almost seeing more with your fingers than you are with your eye at this stage. So take your time and uh, keep, keep, keep chasing that down to get it nice and even. Okay, so we've pretty much thinned that down. It's a pretty even shape and we've followed that profile on the outside of the bowl so remember to rock it round when you get near the base because obviously it's very easy to blast through the bottom and all you've made then is a, a bowl with a hole in the bottom which is not much good so at that stage our, our core is probably about inch and a half something like that in diameter now it's entirely up to you at that stage and see how you get on and also depending on the size and the shape of the bowl you can use that same hook very carefully underneath the core and just gradually chase that down and change the angle from it running parallel until it starts to actually shape into the center of the bowl so that it's almost cone shaped and then you can snap it out but what i find really helps at this stage is that crank tool again depending on the complication and the more complex shape and also the depth of the bowl and almost how much wood you're trying to save here this crank tool you can actually run down the core and it's a much more comfortable angle to hold the tool at. That crank just allows you to get it further away from the outer edge of the bowl. That's a big problem with the straight hook is you can very easily catch that outer edge. So we'll, we'll lay that hook on and we'll start to chase that core down. So see how we've got that little shoulder which we're, we're pushing all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. Now you haven't to worry about the finish on that lump in the middle because that's just waste. So it doesn't matter how rough it looks. The, the, the main thing we've got to think about is getting a nice finish on our bowl. So there you go, we're starting to get that nice cone shape now. So we'll just remove a little bit of that excess at the very bottom with the nose of our hook. You see how it's just rubbing them slightly on the the back edge of the hook so that's a compromise having it double beveled 
is a slight disadvantage, but it does mean you have two different tools. So we'll just run one more time. We can't cut straight into there because we've got our, our metal nails. So we need to make sure that we leave about half an inch, three quarters of an inch before we start to cut that taper in. Whoops. There you go, so we've got a really nice cone shape now. So you can go as thin as you dare. Like I like to leave it a little bit thicker. I don't like it to slip just on the lathe when I'm turning. I like to actually finish turning, get the tools away, and then snap it out. So that's that's pretty pretty good. Like you saw how I caught the the core there a little bit, and it ran up. This is why I don't put any metal fixings on my on my mandrel. Some people put a, a metal ring around there. When you're learning, and you know when you're not familiar with the tools more likely to catch and run up there and if you've got a metal band there you're just going to damage your hook for no reason so I don't think it's necessary really. So what we'll do is we'll just swap over again and we'll use the front edge of the external bevel tool just to smooth as much of the bowl as possible while it's still on the lathe and then we've only got a little bit of wood to clean up with either a hook knife or a bottom knife. And just before it snaps, you might want to spend a little bit of time with a few shavings and you can burnish the surface just as you would with the spindle turning. So we can grab some of these, make sure they're not got any oil or dirt in there. Grab a few of these and these are nice and dry and you can just hold them onto the bowl itself and polish the surface. Just be careful, if you've got a very thin edge it's very easy for it to cut through the shavings and it will burn almost cut you so make sure you, you're aware of that and also if it's very thin it's also likely to scorch so you can burn the edge very easily so you can do that for a good 20 minutes or so if you wanted to to get it really really shiny but I normally just give it a couple of minutes work and then I can snap it off the lathe so you can see it's already starting to flex so all I do is I support the blank support the mandrel and then I orientate it so the grain's running that direction and then I can just carefully crack it and that's it that's that that's that mandrel snapped away from the bowl blank so we're left with our little lump there and using the the short grain it's just snapped cleanly out so we've got our little lump of waste wood with our sort of black center to remove and then we've got our little lump in the center as well so you can if you want to, if you've got a, a lot of material to remove, you can actually come back to the chopping block and using the grain, so that I've got the grain flowing in this direction now, you can almost chop, come split the bottom off. I quite like to do that initially, just so I get rid of that horrible black oily surface. If you're not careful, that, that sort of black goo can get all over your bowl. So knock as much off as you want to with the axe. You can even sort of place it on and tap it down on the block if, you, if you're confident. But as long as you get rid of that oily part, you're safe then. So then we can clean that up with a, either, like I say, a bottoming knife or a crook knife. I'll show you the, the bottoming knife first. So to use the bottoming knife, it's a very curved, almost a straight blade on this with an internal bevel. But in order to use it safely, you've actually got to support the bowl or the plate between your thighs like this and up against some form of dog like these are some wooden pegs in the back of my shave horse but it just means that I can push and it's not going to slip anywhere and I can orientate it so I'm working slightly across the grain and then I'm holding the handle up here supporting the palm of my hand on the edge of the bowl and I'm using my fingers to just pull the blade through like so so you can very easily and control controlled way work across the grain like so and keep going until we get rid of all that last little lump of our backside of our bowl. If you start to get a bit of a build up you can turn it and you can work across the other way. To do the inside face again same same process really we'll orientate that round and working slightly across the grain. Now some of you might not have a bottoming knife or you might want to try and be a bit more efficient with your tool use so there's nothing to stop you using a crook knife. Now 
a crook knife with what we call a hybridised handle. This curved handle really helps to give you a bit more leverage and a bit more control. Now, the advantage of that is you don't need to have a workbench with you. You can just sit, support it near your body, keeping your arm and your bowl and everything tight to your body so that you don't cut yourself or the bowl. And you can just work across the grain like that. Now, in many ways, I prefer this because you haven't got a specialised tool that you can only use for bowls. You can use this for spoons, you can use it for cups. So it's a bit more of a sort of universal tool rather than a specialised one. So it's quite tough, the sycamore. So take your time. And just bear that down a little bit. And we can turn it over. And we can also show you how we can use it on the back side as well. Try and always work across the grain. If you try and work with the grain, it has a likelihood of it catching and maybe tearing it out. So take your time and I'll show you when it's when it's finished. Okay, so we've finished cleaning that up now. And it's fairly dry, but we'd let that dry out very carefully, maybe in some of the shavings. And in a week to a couple of weeks' time when it's completely dried out, we can oil that, preferably with some food safe oil like some food grade linseed oil or olive oil the trouble is if you use things like vegetable oil if you use it and it gets hot and cold when you wash it up it tends to get a bit sticky so try and use something like walnut oil or the food grade linseed oil and then it'll it'll set then and it won't go sticky but we've got a reasonably nice shape we've got a reasonable thickness all the way over and we've got a pretty smooth surface don't be too disheartened if you find that you get a smooth and a rough quarter. That, that comes with experience and also how sharp your tools are and how dry the wood is. But uh, there you go, that's the finished thing really. More than anything, we just wanted to show you how to use these hooks and how to do parts of the bowl, the different sequences. I'm not saying this is the only way of doing it, and it by no means is. I'm just showing you an, an easy way to do it. And hopefully you'll have a lot of fun and have a nice bowl to eat your soup out of. Okay, good luck.